Okay, great. So, uh, so these are uh, our normal inverted indices. Now, they operate on words, but sometimes what you like to do in your search engine is you like to allow people to search for phrases, right? So suppose I wanted to find pink ink as a phrase rather than as two separate words in different parts of the document. So how can you do this? Uh, the cheap way to do this is uh, to turn a phrase into a Boolean and, right? So uh, you find all the documents that contain both the word pink and the word ink, and then do a linear scan of them to see if the words occur as a phrase. So this is what you would do if you had a vanilla search engine which doesn't support uh, positional indices. Right? So uh, this will work, but it is, of course, slow because you're going to end up scanning all of those documents in the hope that some of them contain um, a phrase. Um, so what else can you do? Uh, another cheap way to do this, this is, this is actually surprisingly common, uh, is you could index uh, term pairs as if they were uh, single terms, right? So I could re-tokenize the document in such a way that uh, pink ink is a phrase and then drink pink is a phrase, right? So D5, for example, would, uh, so he likes would be a bigram likes to would be a bigram drink pink is a bigram pink ink is a bigram, right? Um, so I could do that and then when I have pink ink as a phrasal query, I could just convert it to the token pink underscore ink and use my normal uh, retrieval methods. So um, uh, that is fast. That's the upside. The downside is your index size uh, will explode because now you're forming uh, pairs of individual indexing terms. So it's going to be rather large. And, um, and uh, this way you can even sort of approximate trigrams, right? So if I have drink pink occurring once in a document and then pink ink occurring once in a document, and I know that pink only occurs once, then I know that drink pink ink must occur as a trigram because there's no other way. Um, but this is, this is sort of a special case. And in general, you cannot generalize beyond, uh, beyond bigrams with something like that. The right way to do phrases is with something called the proximity index. So, so what do you do? Um, a proximity index is just like your regular inverted index, only it stores positions of terms in a document instead of counts. Right? So this is getting away from our vector space paradigm. Uh, the representation is no longer a bag of terms. Now we're embedding positions in the index. So how would, uh, what would this look like? So if this is our collection of documents, this would be the inverted index for the word he the proximity index, right? So the word he occurs in document one in position one, right? So that's the first position. It also occurs in document one in position five. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so every posting of a term, every occurrence of a term, you store the document where it occurred and the relative position in that document uh, of the term. So the word thing only occurred in document three and it occurred in the second position. So I store three, two, tuple for that term. <clears throat> okay. So uh, this is called a positional index or a proximity index. Sometimes it's called a prox list. I'm just throwing terminology at you. Uh, and uh, this is the key to doing a lot of cool stuff with text. So it seems like a fairly straightforward thing. So, well, yeah, this allows you to do phrases, so what? Uh, it's not just phrases. Uh, this is the way to add structural indexing to your documents. And we talk about that uh, in, the, in, next, in, in the next couple of slides. So anytime you have a domain where the positioning of units is important, this is the way to do it, right? So what's a good example from this? Uh, sometimes you want to do it with text. Uh, sometimes it's very useful. Uh, remember we talked about tokenization and how you want to both, both split and merge. Well, this is an even better way to do this, right? You would split and then store positions to token parts um, and then uh, recombine things on the fly. Uh, this is also very useful if you have other domains which look like text but aren't quite text. So if you're doing genetics or bioinformatics, right, if you're doing DNA sequences, this is the way to store all of your chunks. <clears throat> so uh, how, do you, uh, how do you use a proximity index? Very much in the same way uh, in which you use a regular index. So you use linear merge, only the mechanics are just a little bit different now. Right? 
So the algorithm operates in the same way. So suppose I'm searching for the phrase pink ink, and this is a positional index of ink, and this is the positional index of pink. So how does the algorithm operate? Again, you start with pointers to the first, uh, to the first entry in each list. You compare the document IDs, right? And if the document IDs don't match, you increment the smaller one. So it would go here, right? So now I have a pointer to this entry and to this entry. So I'm in, in document number four. I check, do the document IDs match or not? Yes, they do. So then I go on to the next check. And the next check is you compare the positions of ink and pink in that document. Right? To get a phrase pink ink, what I need is I need ink to be in position which is one larger than pink, right? So in this case, ink occurs in position two, pink occurs in position eight, so do I have a match? No, right, therefore they're, they're six words apart, they're not adjacent to each other. To be adjacent, you need that condition, right? So if that doesn't happen, you increment both pointers. Oh, sorry, you actually increment the smaller pointer, right? So 4.2 would be the smaller pointer, you increment it, then you look again, now the document IDs don't match, so you take the smaller pointer, increment it, you end up with 5.8 and 5.7, so you check the document IDs, the document number matches, right? You do the next check, you do the difference of positions, position of ink is 8, position of pink is 7, so 8 minus 7 is 1, yay, I'm satisfied. I found my match. Okay, yeah. So if ink occurs twice in document four, do we have two separate entries in ink? Yes, yes. If ink, uh, so, uh, if ink occurs twice in document four, you would have two separate entries. You can just look at it. Uh, so uh, we've got an example here, right? The word he occurs twice in document one, in position one, and in position five. You no longer store the frequency. What you store is the list of positions. Okay, so this is how you would do an exact phrase. The trick, or the, 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 the key thing to get at this point is, this is not just about phrases. You can now start doing proximity matching of all kinds. So suppose I wanted to construct a near operator, an operator that matches if the terms are, say, I don't know, within three of each other. What would I do? Just change the difference between the positions Yes, just change the difference to what you want. So you usually plus one or plus two, right? So uh, you would do something like that. So the position of ink minus the position of pink. Now I want them to be within four of each other. So this will match any time the two words are within four words of each other. Why do I have the mod here? Why do I have the absolute value? So what's that? Yes. Okay. All right. So uh, the reason you have the absolute value is for this near operator, I'm assuming that I don't care in what order the terms occur. Right. So I'm happy with ink some words pink or pink some words ink. If I did care about the order, I would just remove the absolute value and make sure that I'm subtracting the right thing from the right thing. Yes. What if there are stop words or something that we want to ignore between terms? What if there are stop words or, or something that you want to take? Well, uh, the first question uh, is do you want, do you really need to take the stop words out? If you want to take them out, then you do it before you construct a proximity index. Right. So as you parse the documents, you throw away stop words and then you build the positional index out of it. That's if you want to take the stop words out. Uh, but if, when you do this, you don't actually have to take the stop words out, right? If the stop words don't occur in your queries, they will not mess anything up. They will not change the rank. So you can just leave them in. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, they, they just eat up your index space, that's all.